When you're using a media query, things like min width and max width make sense once you think about it a little bit, but on first glance, or if English isn't your first language, it can be a little bit strange. I mean, min being for this and bigger, and then max for the smaller side of things. Well, one nice thing about CSS is that it's ever evolving. So while that min width and max width options aren't going away anytime soon, or probably ever at all, we are soon going to have a new way that we will be allowed to write media queries. And it has an added bonus of being less characters to write, as well as being super easy to set like different ranges and stuff like this, which it's a little bit cumbersome and a lot of characters to write. Hello, my friend and friends, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kevin, and I'm here to help you embrace the cascade and start falling in love with CSS. In this video, we're gonna be looking at another thing that's the future of CSS holds after looking at container queries not too long ago. Now, this way of writing media queries, it's not really supported very well at the moment uh, and not even completely supported where you can use it, but on like container queries, you can, you can actually use it in some browsers today, or well, you can at least in Firefox, sort of, as we'll see. But just because we can't use it everywhere yet, I do think it's always fun to look at where CSS is headed. And this is part of the level four specification of media queries, which I've included a link to down below. All right, so this is generally how you would see media queries written, right? And this is, I tend to like simplifying them as much as possible. I just set my min widths on here and let them work away. So you can see that at small screen sizes, everything is stacking. Then I'm changing my grid template columns. I'm just setting those up to be a repeat three. So when we get to 35 M, there you go. And then here at the largest one, it's going to go over to six columns, just like that. So nice and straightforward. Um, but one thing, again, min width, it's kind of weird here. It's not the most, you know, min width means that and bigger, even though the word min is there. I know it makes sense because it's minimum width. So from that minimum size and bigger, but still. Um, so the new way that we're going to be able to write this is just to write width. And I am uh, in Firefox here because this only works in Firefox right now. Um, so I can say width, and if the width is greater than 35M, and if I hit save, VS Code's actually underlining that, it's saying it doesn't know what this is, but we'll see that it works. It's working just like before. So I think this might look a little bit weird if you're not used to it, but it's actually a lot more intuitive. I think new people coming into CSS will have a much easier time with it, and it's a lot less characters to write. Uh, and another nice thing with it is you can also do it like this. So do you want it greater than 35 or greater than and equal? So if we hit save on that, again, we can see that it is still working right there. And so we can switch this one over as well. So again, width greater than 50 and hit save and or greater than and equal to, depending on what you prefer. Um, the greater than and equal to is actually more similar to the min width or a max width we're using. Uh, now, one thing that we do tend to have is you end up with multiple, right? So you'll have this and then you'll have an and and then you have a max width on the side. So max width is 50M. Um, and let's just make this a bit bigger so we can see the code. So one of the issues when you would do this is then when you'd come in with your minimum width after, so this used to be, let's just set this back, uh, min width of 50M. Because you have a max width here and a min width here, they're both equal to. So what happens at exactly 50? And so you'd often get things like this, where you're just trying to push it up that one extra 0 0.01 pixel, so there's no overlap. Um, so when we're using the greater thans, so if I do width is greater than 50, we don't have to worry about anything like this, because it's not equal to 50, it's as soon as it passes that. So this is a little bit better. Um, and here, we could just do it the other way around. We could write width and do that. So the greater than, you know, there we go. If the width is greater than 35, but less than 50, uh, it should work fine. So here we have three columns and then it jumps up to my six columns. There is a way of doing it within the new specification that is a lot better than this, as I hinted at the start. The only thing is it's not supported in Firefox yet, but it is going to be eventually supported in the browsers once they start implementing it. And I think it's the easiest thing in the world. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna copy this and we're gonna paste it right here in a comment. So instead of having to write all that, we could actually come inside here and within one single one, and what do we wanna do? We wanna say 35M, uh, then we wanna come here and say width, and then we wanna do that and say 50M. So this is basically saying, if the width is bigger than 35M, but smaller than 50M, that we will be using this one right here. Now, VS Code's yelling at me, and it also doesn't work in Firefox. Uh, we can actually see here in Firefox, like it just, it, it's skipping that whole part. So this isn't working yet, but this is part of the new specification. We just haven't got to the implementation phase of it yet, but it is something I'm really excited about. I think this is going to make writing media queries so much easier. I'm really looking forward to once browsers start picking up support
support for this. And as I mentioned off the top, I've recently looked at container queries as well. So if you like seeing the cutting edge things, the new things coming to CSS, the video is right here for you to go and explore. And with that, a really big thank you to both Zach and Randy, who are my supporters of Awesome on Patreon, as well as a thank you to all my other patrons as well. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.